Pratap Reddy has set many a milestone in the healthcare industry and is credited with bringing in innovations like telemedicine technology to take healthcare to the interiors of India. And Preeta Reddy, a trailblazer in her own right, is aware that the buck doesn't stop there. For a country which has less than one hospital bed for every 1,000 people and where people's trust and the numbers tilt in favour of private players, huge challenges need to be overcome. So, what needs to be done? Now let me, you know, go to another aspect of healthcare which I know that you are also very, very uh, committed to, which is really about what is the kind of hospital models that we should be creating. You know, for instance, you know, your father, uh, Pratap Reddy, of course, has been a pioneer in creating this concept of multi-specialty hospitals. But at the same time, we know that we are short of 2 million hospital beds. And having said that, we also know that 60% of hospital beds are in the in private metros, sector. Yeah. Right? And in the city. And in the city. So how do we re reach beyond? How do we you know, address this geographical challenge, do you think? You know, there's, there's actually a lot to be done. The Indian healthcare landscape is huge. Uh, it needs many models to really answer the challenges. You know, you need these centers of excellence, the large teaching, research-oriented hospitals, which will really do the high-end healthcare, uh, which will act train people for the future, uh, which will be like, like a hub for many activities. Having said that, I think we need to be able to reach out into the community. So then you come with smaller models of hospital, high end of acute care, but not too many interventions like, you know, transplants and things like that, which would come back to the main hospitals. But you need to uh, take the care, level of care, At the least up point to secondary of care. Level. Yeah, the point of care needs to go to the, you know, go to people at large. So then you have the smaller, you know, less expensive hospitals, clinics, etc. Right now, what What's happening is that if you look at a state like Karnataka, mm. where you have, uh, you know, maybe 200 and, you know, you have a yeah. huge number of uh, medical colleges. Yeah. And then you look at somebody like Bihar who has about six or seven medical colleges. There's a huge disparity. Yeah. So one of the ways is to increase the teaching hospitals that are uh, attached to medical colleges. Is that a way of... But Kiran, there's a problem there because for a teaching college, you need the teachers, you need the staff. And you will not find staff going away to the boonies. You know, it, it doesn't work. Instead of that, you should actually have the teaching institutions where you can get, you know, people of caliber to teach and train and then be able to send people out into the boonies or wherever to be able to handle healthcare there. You know, it's going to be very, because they need an infrastructure. You know, you send young doctors to a small town, they still need to look after the children, children need education, they need a lifestyle. It, it doesn't work. It's, it's idealistic to say that we will be able to, uh, you know, send them to these remote locations. But yet if you look at it... But if you rotate them, they'll go. Yeah, but if you look at it, I mean, look at some of our medical colleges which have started up in sort of fairly sort of remote locations. And over time, they have sort of Built been able to... Built a township around it. Yeah. yeah. But you know, they're so far and few. Uh, how many you can count them on your fingers? But can we create more? Is the we question. We should create more. You know, I think we should plan to create at least five, six hundred more, which will take care of you know a certain percentage of the load. And that's why our reach structure is making a lot of sense. Of course, we've got this huge agenda of doing 250 of them. But, you know, one is opening in a remote location in Tamil Nadu. But what it will do is it will cater to about 200 villages around it. And, you know, a young, dynamic group of staff who are very committed will live there for five years. So that's why a health city supported by at least about, you know, 40, 50 of the smaller hospitals so that there's interaction of staff, there's a seamless exchange of knowledge, staff, IT-based. That is what we have to do. Having said that, there's the financial access. You know, now we have to build a model for people to be able to access healthcare. And one of my, you know, requests to the planning commission is going to be that if you do a simple arithmetic, you know, we have a billion population, 500 million can actually pay one rupee a day. 
500 million rupees a day into 365 and and a sustainable program which will go on you know way yeah, beyond our like time that. way beyond our time we would have actually created then a robust uh, sustainable financial model so the financial access is actually taken care of and i'm passionate i'm convinced about it we've done the math i've got experts i've got economists to come and you know uh, take a look at it. No, that's, that's, that's a very means, good idea. Yeah, right? you know, I'm not saying a billion. I mean, if there's somebody living in some remote uh, location who's not going, but 500 million people, you can actually access that one rupee a day from. So there is an opportunity, even in our billion people, to build a sustainable financial model for a national healthcare system. But how long before we see a sustainable and successful healthcare program?